Today I'm going to talk about how we can extend all of our five senses throughout the world using internet and augmented and virtual reality. I believe we should be like this、uh, samurai. It's a famous samurai. He was blind. He couldn't see. He lost his eyesight in some battle, but he could still win the final battle, and that's because he could perceive the world with all of his five senses. And similarly, we should be the same through the internet. But if you think about it, with today's computing technology, it's very much based on audiovisual and, and also interaction with glass. Whether you're looking at your laptop or looking at your iPad or iPhone, everything is behind the glass. You're looking through the glass or you're touching the glass. And it's as if in the real world you could look through the window, but you can't open the window. You can't you can't reach out and touch, and you can't taste or smell. You're just locked behind the window. And related science has also shown that most of our human communication is in fact nonverbal. So more than more than 60% of communication is nonverbal, and that's why we lose a lot of Uh, human communication and emotional communication when we're online and communicating through through the internet. So I believe in the future we will move from the age of information that we're living in today. You can share almost any kind of data through the internet, any information, but it's still very difficult to share your actual experience. For example, if you're going out. To lunch or dinner with someone, or walking through the park together, it's very difficult to share that experience online. So, in the future, I believe we'll move from the age of information to the age of experience communication through the internet. So, I'm going to talk about、uh, the th- three senses that we rarely、uh, think about when we're talking about、uh, human. Uh, and computer interaction, touch, and taste and smell.、Uh, so touch is actually one of the most important senses.、Uh, in fact,、uh, there's there was study done uh, on uh, infant rhesus monkeys, which are、uh, not human but related to human, and they put a monkey inside a infant monkey inside a. Uh, cage and it could choose between two、uh, fake mothers.、Uh, one of the one of the mothers is、uh, just made out of wire and doesn't look very realistic, but it had the、um, the, the milk, the food.、Uh, the other monkey was、uh, furry and looked very realistic, like a real mother monkey. And the infant would choose the realistic monkey and hug her rather than eat. And they have to stop the experiments because the the infant monkey may die. So it shows that at a fundamental level,、uh, touch is probably not just a desire but a basic need. And humans are probably very similar. And so touch is a very important interaction, but we very rarely see it when we're interacting through through the internet. So I, I、uh, started to work a few years ago on、uh, using augmented re- and virtual reality for touch, and I thought that、uh, a good way to start would be for human-to-pet communication because、uh, still we can't talk to animals. We pe- we communicate with our pets through touching or hugging. So with this system here,、uh, which we built,、uh, you can、uh, be at the office or at a conference. And you can、uh, touch a doll, which has pressure sensors representing your pet,、uh, and then it would feel the touching on her body. In this case, it was a in this case it was a pet chicken. And so, through the internet, you could send the touch through、uh, touch. And of course, we wanted to、uh, extend this to human to human communication. So the next step. Uh, what uh, I wanted to do was make a system that parents and children,、uh, when they're apart, they could hug each other through the internet. 
So, for example, I'm now in Taiwan, and uh, my daughter is uh, in Malaysia. So we we can't hug each other, but with this system here, we can not only telephone call each other, but we can hug each other uh, through the internet. And it's interactive, so both parent and child can feel the hugging. So I'll show you a quick video of this system now. It's so important for human communication to touch and hug each other. So Justin Timberlake brought sexy back. You're bringing hugs back. That's right. How does this replicate a real hug? And if you just uh, uh, give a hug. My expert hug? Yes. We did a study of expert huggers such as yourself, okay. and where you put your hands is where we put our special hugging actuation system on the body. Hugging actuation system. So this uh, system here yeah. will replicate the feeling of where you so are. So it's going to apply some pressure where my hands exactly. would be. Exactly. It gives a kind of feeling of the human hand caress okay. on, on your body, on, the, on the body. Let's see it work. With Nancy far, far away in another location, Adrian takes out a controller and transmits his virtual hug via the internet. And then you can see that this hugging pajama is connected to the internet, produces the hug in the same spot. We can both wear such jackets and then interactively we can have a hugging and caressing together. Right. The so that was a a la early lab prototype a few years ago, but since then one of my uh, PhD students has uh, graduated and he made a company to sell this uh, jacket. But actually the application is for autistic children, because autistic children, when they have a panic attack, if they're tightly squeezed, it can reduce their panic. So this uh, commercial product, you can monitor your child's health on the phone, and then through your app you can send a squeeze, uh, you can send them a hug through the internet. But I think it's still quite uh, a long time before we have uh, uh, full body suits for hugging. So we're now developing more smaller uh, devices. We made a study and what people feel very comfortable wearing are things like watches, bracelets, necklace, ear ear earrings, and rings. And also, ring is kind of very intimate, uh, intimate device. If you give someone a ring, it means you, you love them or they're your very good friend. So we made a, uh, a hugging device in the size of a ring. So just a quick video here. This uh, one of my students, uh, she can be anywhere in the world and thinking about her friend and squeeze her ring. And this, the ring has pressure sensors on it so that uh, it measures the pressure when she squeezes the ring. And she can simulate, for example, uh, holding hands with her friend. And, and when he, her friend uh, can be also anywhere in the world, for example, in the office, and he'll get the squeeze on his finger. And then he sees the lighting up and a squeeze on his finger, and he can also squeeze his ring and send a squeeze back to uh, his friend. So you can interactively uh, use this ring for haptic transmission through the internet. So we're making a, uh, that was a little bit older version, and we've made a, a newer version of the ring. You can still show the uh, prototype on my hand here. Still a little bit big, uh, but uh, we're going to try to make it smaller and smaller. You can see the inside, there's a print, small printed circuit boards which have all the electronics, but we're trying to make a circular printed circuit board so that uh, in, in the next step you can have a, a jewelry size ring. And it can connect to your uh, 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 social network so you can send a, a send a hug to your Facebook friend or your Twitter friend through the internet. Now, one thing I want to say uh, is that uh, when we digitize the sensors, for example, having this hugging ring, we don't need to just simulate what can happen in the real world. In the real world, you can only hug one person at a time. You can only shake one person's hand at a time. But in the internet, you can have not just one-to-one, -one, but one-to-many. So for example, let's say you just got A plus in your uh, exam. You want to hug all 1,000 of your Facebook friends at the same time. You can do it using this ring. What about many-to-one? Well, 
I think, uh, I'm not sure who's the famous pop star in Taiwan, but let's say in, in US, every, everyone wants to hug Taylor Swift, uh, but it's impossible. So instead, you could maybe pay one, one US dollar and then use your ring to send a hug to Taylor Swift through the internet. So that's many to one. Now, what about uh, 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 kissing? Kissing is also a very important uh, interface for uh, human communication. And uh, what about if, uh, like me, you, you live far away from your uh, mother or grandmother and you want to kiss them through the internet? It's, it's, very, it's impossible now. So we've been developing devices that you can send kisses through the internet. And I'll just show you a quick video of this now. It's called Kissinger, Kiss Messenger. So here's an example of one of my students. She's talking to her friend. Actually, it's her husband. Uh, and they're doing a Skype call. Then she can pick up her kissing robot, and it feels the pressure of her lips and transmits this uh, through the internet. So you can see each other and kiss each other at the same time. And it simulates the real kiss. Uh, now we're working on uh, even sm uh, versions that you can use with your smartphone, because then you can see the video of your friend and uh, see the video of your friend and kiss, kiss them uh, through your phone. Uh, that's our ultimate goal, but we're still a little bit big. You can see our uh, li still a little bit big because a lot of electronics here. I want to call a volunteer to come and test this device with me. Can someone come up on stage? OK, so uh, you pretend that you're uh, in New York. And I'm in Taipei, okay. and uh, and then you and then I'm I'm gonna you put put this on your lips, all right? Yes, yes, on your lips, and you can feel my pressure. It works. It works. Yeah. All right. All right. So you can see you can see your your friend, and feel my pressure, and I can feel your pressure at the same time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, so uh, very quickly, I'm going to talk about the remaining two senses, which is uh, taste and smell. These are the two senses which we very rarely hear about uh, with, when we're talking about internet. But uh, taste and smell are very important senses. In fact, they're the only two senses which connect to the limbic system of the brain, which is responsible for emotion and memory. So it's very important that we can have taste and smell through the internet, because we most a lot of our lives are online now. It's very difficult to digitize taste and smell, because unlike sound and light, they're not frequency-based. A frequency is a number and can easily be digitized. But taste and smell are chemical-based, so it's very difficult to digitize. We've been working on a device that uh, you can send smell through the internet. Uh, and uh, it's a device which we've, you can see the prototypes here, getting smaller and smaller. And now it's a small size like this. And it's on sale in Japan. And I'll show you a quick video of the system now. Food is inseparable from the history of mankind. And now, 2013. Introducing a whole new approach to food, tasting and savoring food with your nose. This means nose barbecue. I think you can read it. How to one, choose. Two, insert. Three, smell. Four, eat. And that's all there is to it. So, are we ready to savor this? Let's say you're a student with no money. All you need is some white rice and your stomach will feel satisfied. Let's say you're a woman on a diet. Obviously, calories are not an issue when you're dining at Anayakaniku. 
Okay, uh, we've been uh, working with uh, uh, a chef in Spain, Mugaritz. He's one of the uh, top chefs in the world, I think number three, Chef Andoni Luis Adariz. And we made a virtual version of one of his dishes so that guests can experience his dish and smell his dish even uh, when they're uh, not at his restaurant. And we launched this at a gastronomy festival in Madrid. Uh, to, I think it was uh, very well received. Now, one thing I want to uh, uh, again say is that uh, uh, the, these, these devices are chemical-based, so uh, both, both sides need to have the device on their phone. So ultimately, what we need to make is devices that uh, can produce taste and smell without using any, uh, without using any uh, chemicals. And so what we've been working on now is are devices that can stimulate directly your taste receptors using electrical signals. And so that means that you can send the signal through the internet because it's just electrical current. So my last demo, uh, I'd like to call another uh, volunteer uh, to try a machine which will produce a virtual uh, taste using this device. OK, so can I call for it? It's, don't worry, it's clean with medical alcohol. So uh, can I, we only got 43 seconds. Here we go. Thank you, very brave lady. Please give her a hand of applause. <laughs> OK. So what you need to do is you need to put your tongue in between these silver electrodes. So your tongue goes in between. It's not on yet, don't worry. And you can put, it in, put your tongue in. And now I'm going to turn it on, and you will experience a virtual sour or lemony taste. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you feel it? Mm -hmm. Great. So, so this directly stimulates your taste receptor without using any chemicals. Thank you very much for being so brave. Thank you. OK, so we are working on a new device. It's not ready to show yet, uh, which, will, which will stimulate your uh, olfactory uh, receptors in the nose. So something like this, but with tiny electrodes that we will insert into your nose. And then you can virtually uh, smell, for example, smell coffee or smell, uh, smell a mango or banana. But uh, this is a work in progress. But the main point is, is that when we can develop these digital taste and smell devices, we will make totally new kinds of communication through the internet, because we can use taste and smell to connect uh, to each other. For example, uh, now it's very difficult for children to cook in the kitchen, because there's fire, there's knives, it's a bit dangerous. But in the future, children will be able to program recipes on their computer or their iPad, and then send the recipe through the internet, and their grandmother can eat it in the other side of the world. Chef, instead of watching uh, uh, Master Chef on television and seeing the dish, you'll be able to smell and taste the dish as well through, through the internet. And also, cooking is a very important social communication. And now a lot of, fa lot of families uh, the different generations live apart, maybe different cities or different countries. So in the future, uh, grandfather and grandson can, can communicate to each other by cooking together through the internet with these digital devices. So that's the end of my talk, and I want to summarize by saying uh, let's work together to turn the internet into a five-sense, multi-sensory experience. Thank you very much. Thank you.